Welcome to episode 126 of Real Health Radio. You can find the links talked about as part of this episode at the show notes, which is www.7, so the word all spelled out, S-E-V-E-N, hyphenhealth.com forward slash 126. Welcome to Real Health Radio. Health advice that's more than just about how you look. And here's your host, Chris Sandel. Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another episode. So this is an episode where it's not a solo show, I'm not interviewing some expert, uh, but instead you're going to be hearing from a past client of mine called Rachel. So this episode coming together was rather serendipitous. Last week, out of the blue, I received an email from Rachel. I'd worked with her during the latter part of last year and the very beginning of this year. And she emailed to say that it had been six months since we finished up working together and wanted to update me on everything that had happened since then. And I'd been so happy with what Rachel had achieved while we were working together. But it was just really lovely to hear how these improvements had continued on and how they had permeated out, like positively affecting all areas of your life. And I know it's cliche to say, but it really made my day. I I think I'd had a pretty crappy night's sleep because of Ramsey and was just having a bit of a a struggle of a day. And then to receive an email like that, it, it really did lift me. So I let Rachel know how happy I was to hear from her and how well she was doing and after she'd be up for having a conversation together uh, for the podcast. And she said she'd be honoured and so here we are. Um, I've done episodes like this before, uh, which I'll link to in the show notes, but it's normally two past clients in one show. But this time I decided to just go into more detail with Rachel and have her share more of her experience. And what I really like about this conversation was that Rachel touches on so many issues that my clients deal with. So they don't, uh, they won't necessarily deal with all of them, but Rachel really flags a large chunk of the kinds of fears and concerns that clients have when they start out, as well as the changes that they notice and experience as they go through the process. And another reason why I'm releasing this episode now is because I'm taking on clients again. And client work is the core of my business, and it's how I spend the vast majority of my time. And after working with clients for the last decade, I feel confident in saying I'm very good at what I do, and and hopefully Rachel can be testament to this, as you'll hear. Uh, She demonstrates why these struggles aren't just a collection of symptoms, but are instead part of someone's identity and impacting on all areas of their life. That it's not just about food and and understanding the the science of physiology, but also about compassion and how the more intangible thoughts and feelings and belief need to be addressed as well. And that changes actually add to the quality of life. Like, yes, it can be hard to start with, as change invariably is, but that these new habits and ways of doing things are enjoyable. Every day isn't misery convincing yourself that it's going to be better for your long-term health that you get to appreciate and experience the improvements in your physical health and your mental health and your emotional health now. And after working together, my clients regained what they thought was impossible. And in Rachel's case, it was regaining her period, overcoming digestive issues so that she can now eat anything, changing her relationship with exercise, being content and having belief in herself having high energy and being able to write and think and focus for her PhD and becoming accepting of her body and working with what it's good at and embracing its strengths. And I put out so much free material. The podcast is free, the blog posts are free, and while the free material I put out, I stand behind, it is much more general. You have to discern what is and isn't relevant for you. But when I work with someone, I'm the one who can sort through this and show them what's important and what is the low-hanging fruit and what are the levers that will make the most difference, which, again, you'll hopefully hear in Rachel's account. So if you want this kind of precision in helping you recover your health, now is your chance to work with me. And if you're interested in working together or simply finding out more, you can head over to www.7-health.com forward slash help, so H-E-L-P, and there you can read about how I work with clients and apply for a free initial chat. 
So with this intro out of the way, let's get on with today's show. Here is my conversation with my past client, Rachel. Hey, Rachel, thank you for chatting with me today. Hey, Chris, how's it going? I'm good. So I guess to start with, do you want to explain a little about your background and why you first got in contact with me? Uh, Yep. So it's a bit of a long history, but essentially um, I was struggling on and off with anorexia since I was about 16 or 17. And um, I got to a point where I got really sick when I was about 25. But then after that, I sort of I went through recovery as everyone does. And I got to a point where I was like I was recovered enough that I didn't need medical attention. But. I was in a place where I still really wasn't, I still really wasn't eating like a an, an adult, I guess. Like I, I was still kind of hovering like on on lowish calories, and I was, I was really like struggling with this in my head, and I was really tired, and I, and I just, I felt like I was at a point where I, I just wanted to really be done with my eating disorder, because um, I don't think I'd fully. I don't think I'd fully gotten over it in the psychological sense and the behavioral sense. And so I, yeah, I just reached a point where I just really, really wanted to be done with it. And a number of times I tried to do that on my own. Um, as much as I am a determined person, um, it was something that I didn't, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't do every time I tried to do it, I would, I would say, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna gonna eat normally and everything, and then I would feel like crap, and I would, I would really, I would really feel guilty about eating so much, and then it would just go into this vicious cycle, and I would be back at square one. So I, I, I then started to look into the option of of getting um, someone else on board to help me, um, and then that's when I I came across yourself, I think. And had you worked, I mean, you said you you tried to do it on your own and then you started looking at other options. Had you worked with other people throughout the years? I mean, you mentioned about having anorexia and and getting treatment there, but after that point, had there been any other practitioners you'd worked with? Um, Yeah, so I think really um, predominantly before I had worked mainly with a psychotherapist, so not really related to the the eating itself and the behavioral stuff itself, um, which really, really helped the emotional part and really helped me deal with a lot of the reasons why um, I was I was suffering with anorexia. And then just before I worked with you, I did work with a nutritional therapist um, very, very briefly, but I didn't really work out. And so was there hesitancy in contacting me and like how long were you were you thinking about it? Yeah, actually I think I was thinking about this today actually and I think I I think I reached out to you or I maybe looked into it um a few months before I actually decided to go for it and I I thought about it and I looked at it and thought okay I'm going to do this and then I and then I talked myself out of it again. Um and then, so I waited another another few months, I think, and had, you know, tried to do it myself again and and then just really, really just got to that point of I really need help with this. Um, so then, like like everything I do, I, I read everything. I, I looked at all the testimonials. I looked at, okay, what's the, what's the approach? Like, how does this work? Everything like that. Um and then and then and and then after speaking with you i think it was that i realized that it would be a good fit um cuz that's really important for me as well um and yeah so that so then I, I i think i took it from there but yeah i think i remember going in and out of like I'll just do it. And then even I think when you first responded to me, I think I was like, I delayed the response a little bit. (laughs) But yeah. And so what was the process like of working together? Can you describe that for for other people, what the experience looked like and also felt like? Yeah, well, um, honestly, like 
when I first started out, you know, like I said, I was really motivated. I'm, I'm you know, going to do anything. I'm normally one of those people who, um, if someone if, if someone tells me to do something, I'm I'm pretty good at following things. You know, um, I'm pretty like respectful of of that that thing when you know when other people provide you with with help and stuff like that but I remember like initially I I think the thing is you were telling me what I knew I I needed to hear but I didn't really want to hear (laughs) and it's that thing where you're you're mentally ready for change but when it actually comes to doing it it's a it's a very different story and I remember in I remember after the initial part, I started to feel better because we we addressed a lot of the stuff that I was having problems with my digestion as well, and we addressed some of that, and so I started to feel a bit better. And then you were like, "How about you try having some breakfast?" And I was like, anxiety just like hit the roof, and I was like, "Oh my god, I can't have breakfast! Like I can't I can't eat anything that early in the morning." And and so I kind of went in the process. I kind of went in and out of this, like, like almost when I when it came to having our our catch up, I would I would be like, oh, I know this is good for me, but I'm so like <laughs> I'm so like I don't know if I want to do this, and <laughs> and I remember like during our conversations, I remember like thinking to myself yeah I know he's right I know he's right but like uh, maybe maybe I just won't do it maybe I'll just pretend (laughs) Um, but I would say that was more more in the early stages and then as things started to go on and um I started to when I started to eat better um my mood started to shift as well and as my mood started to shift, I think I started to be much more on board with the process. Um, and I was much more convinced, I suppose, um, I think is the word, that, that it was that it was the right thing to do and what you were telling me was the right thing to do. Um, but it, it really, I mean, I think as anyone knows, um, anything that involves behaviour change, especially behaviours... Th- I mean, talking over a decades here, um, anything that involves that kind of behaviour change is ultimately going to be a struggle. <laughs> ultimately going to be a struggle. So then tell me what improvements you've noticed in your health since we, we work together. Okay, yeah. So I think this is probably a big one for me. Um, when I first came to you, I was really tired all the time and I had the worst digestion, like I was struggling to digest certain things and I had convinced myself that I was going to eat low carb and high fat. And I think the thing is as well, like we were we were trying to get my period back and I, I had read all this stuff that, you know, high fat diet is how to get your period back and everything. And, um, and I now <laughs> now when i think about that um i can't believe that that's where i was but yeah so i had a lot of a lot of issues with fatigue and digestion and my period was missing and and all of that and and it, and i was also not eating a lot but still putting on weight and just feeling like really like crappy about myself and now honestly like it's like a new person I remember um I think the 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 massive thing obviously was when my period came back um and it came back in December um and that was I think that was probably the biggest turning point for me um and even in even in how much better my moods are like I'm just I mean, you'll know when we first started working from when we first started working together. But like now, like I'm so I'm so much more content, and and I just I think the thing was I think I we talked about this, but I noticed that I just laugh very freely, <laughs> like so, like like <laughs> it's very hard to explain, but um, 
I'll just be chatting with my friends and like before I, I don't know I think before especially um when I wasn't feeling so good like I'd be kind of not numb to my emotions but I would be just a bit kind of flat and now like I just like burst into like this like complete <laughs> hilarity <laughs> and it it just it comes out of nowhere it's like it's like a deep kind of belly laugh you know and um to me that that that's the biggest shift mentally that I just everything just feels lighter it feels easier it feels I don't know um the way I can approach life is easier because I feel like I have I have the energy I have the the resilience I have I have all of that and um and also the other big one I think was my digestion um I think at the time like I was like <laughs> I think I was I was a little bit um trying to avoid eating more carbs but also every time like you were like well try this try that and I was like oh but sweet potatoes aren't working for me and like everything anything I I guess because I was pretty low carb anything I ate that was had a little bit of fiber or or whatever it was or the the types of sugars and stuff like it was just not it was not digesting just digesting well at all um, and I, I really struggled with that because that was a daily thing. And now, like, my 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 digestion is on fire. Like, <laughs> it's just, like, it's just, it's just amazing. Like, I'm, like, I feel like a machine now, you know? Like, <laughs> and, and I am absolutely knocking back the carbs. <laughs> so, so, um, so, yeah, so that was a, a really nice thing that my body shifted and adapted and, and, it was a really nice experience to see also that, you know, your body really, really knows what you need. <laughs> um, if you just, if you just listen to it and you just give it enough and, and give it good stuff, then actually it'll, fi- it'll figure it out, you know? Um, and yeah, just, ah, uh, and I, I, yeah. And so the other thing I, that was a big issue was uh really over exercising before as well um and that's that's changed quite a lot so um now um I still I still exercise now and I think I think we'll talk about that a bit later but yeah um now like it's not a I think before it was like an equation for me, you know, it was like, okay, so I ended up, I splurged on this or I binged on, or not binged, but I I ate something like maybe sugary or something I wouldn't normally have. And so I'll, I'll do a bit extra exercise tomorrow. And it's totally not like that anymore. Um, It's a much more like, it's because I've got the energy to do it. It's it's because it it gives me pleasure. It's because it's a goal oriented thing. It it's about how it makes me feel as a as a woman, as a as a human, all of those things. Um and so yeah, massive, massive shift in that sense. And I really I enjoy I just enjoy it now. I mean I love it, you know? So yeah, so that I think those are the biggest biggest changes in my health. Okay, and uh, I'd like to just chat about some of those in a bit more detail. So you said you got your period back, and that was in December time. Roughly, how long had we been working together by that stage? Um, I think it might have been around six or seven months. Uh, is that right? I'm not sure. Mm. I'm not sure. I, uh, my recollection would be shorter than that because I'm, I'm thinking it was probably around the August time, July or August time that we started. Okay, so maybe around, yeah, so from the summer then. Um, yeah, so four months or something like that, roughly. Um, and then since it since it started, how has it has it been up and down? Has it been like clockwork? What what's happened? What's it been like? Um, so pretty much, I mean, 
Um, the 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 cycle length itself hasn't always been um, the same, but pretty much um, every month since December, I've had a period. Um, it's been really healthy, and and I, and what I mean by that is it it flows pretty you know freely, and then. I don't have any major cramps. I don't have any major issues with it, and I get I get all of the symptoms leading up to it. So I know exactly when it's going to come, and then it it turns up. And it, I mean, normally my cycles around the twenty eight to thirty two day mark. So it's it varies, but it's pretty pretty spot on um, every month. And and I, yeah, it it makes me it, it makes me really happy when it arrives. <laughs> um, it's the only way I can explain it. Um, but yeah, I mean, since then I, I've I've really had no problems with it at all. And then what about the the food side of things? So yeah, how how has your eating changed? How has your thoughts around foods changed? Yeah, wow. Um, so now um, be very much the centre of um, of what I did, and I I would be constantly thinking about like um, I think a lot of it was in my head. I was trying to fix my my amenorrhea, so I was trying to fi- find a way to get my period back, and um, I. I think before it was really like such a it took so much of my time and now like it's more of a a, it's just really more about fuel and um it's really more about well I need this to do what I want to do and I enjoy to eat I enjoy eating these things and it's less of a yeah god I used to spend so much time planning and spending thinking about which foods and everything and now like it's just I feel like having some sweet potato and peanut butter tonight and I'm just gonna (laughs) I'm just gonna do it um it's much more relaxed um I can like I can go to a friends and they can cook me a meal and it's not a source of anxiety. I'm not like trying to control it. I'm not trying to mitigate like what I eat before or what I eat the next day, depending upon like what they cook me. And I'm more just enjoying, enjoying the experience of that. Like on Friday night, I, I went to a friends and I mean, I, I, generally don't eat a lot of pasta just because it's not not something I like but he made some pasta and I was like okay we'll just go with it and it's not yeah it's just not the center anymore um and and in terms of how my eating has changed um I am a I'm very much like a carb lover now (laughs) (laughs) um I yeah, I, I, I just eat so much now, like, um, and it's, it's like, the way that, I guess a lot of people are. It's like, okay, some days I'm not so hungry, other days I'm ravenous, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go with that. Um, whereas before, I, I would have been hungry, but I would have just been like, no, but this is all I am supposed to have today, so. I'm going to do this and or I would I used to be scared of my hunger as well I used to be like but like what happens if I eat more and and that kind of thing whereas now it's it's no big deal um and yeah I just I think honestly I think that the increase in carbs thing is just the biggest thing for me because I never I was never convinced like I was never convinced that was going to be good for me and I'm not saying like it's a very individual thing but I've actually found out that I do better with a lot more carbs (laughs) which is um which was quite a surprise 
but um and i i still eat well uh i always have liked my vegetables i always have since i was a kid i always have liked to eat like that but i still if i want to you know have a cookie eat a piece of cake whatever it is i'm I, i'm going to do it and it's it's okay and the next day I move on and life goes on and, you know, it's, yeah, I, I just don't, I used to, when I used to eat, like, sweet things, I used to ruminate on it, you know, like, and I used to, I remember I used to spend hours and hours, like, trying to, like, if, if like, for example, when I went to my friends for the pasta, like, I would, I would have come home and I would have, like, tried to figure out what the portion size and how many calories that was and and how can I like how can I track that because I don't know I just don't know like what was in it and and now I just yeah it's just you just accept that it's part of it's part of life it's part of socializing it's just it's not so important you know and then what about the exercise front? So that obviously changed changed a lot. Um, so, yeah, just des- describe that. Yeah, so I think before, um, like I said, it was very much like an equation thing and, and almost sometimes, I guess, uh, resembled like punishment in a way that, you know, if I ate something that I wasn't comfortable with, it, w- it was like a purging. It was, it was a trying to get rid of... I think especially if it was sugary things, like something happened in my brain where I would almost physically feel it like around my stomach. I would feel it. And the only way that I could get rid of that feeling was just to like go exercise really, really hard when there was no way that it wasn't like I said, it's not it wasn't even like I was binging. I was just eating like a thing that wasn't wasn't what I deemed like to be okay and yeah it, it wasn't an equation at all and so now now it's changed quite drastically actually um so <laughs> uh at the start of this year well towards the end of last year I started to get into lifting weights and stuff like that a bit more and I was doing a bit of calisthenics and um I was getting quite good at handstands and then I was getting quite good at like deadlift and my numbers were pretty good and I was getting really strong and then I started to think about it and uh, I really started seriously um training for for um powerlifting um at the beginning of the year um so when I started lifting I, I realized that actually I could get really strong like I I realized that actually I was never built to be skinny, like never built to be. I just, I come from a very athletic family and like my my granny always used to say I was born like with legs, like a center half, you know, <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, is when you're, <laughs> when you're a wee girl, you don't really want to hear those kind of things. But yeah, like just very well built and like, strong bone structure and everything so I actually realized that when I started lifting like my body adapted really well to that and so I enlisted a coach to help with that um and I've seriously been training for powerlifting um since the start of the year like I said and yeah it's it's a completely different approach um potentially I am uh quite obsessed about it but in a (laughs) I guess in a bit more of a healthier way in the sense that like I'm trying to learn about the technical aspects I'm trying to learn about competitions and what the process is and how to improve and how to and the focus is very much more on like lifting with good form um getting the technique right um yeah it's about it's about obviously improving your lifts but it's about being a it's about being a good power lifter and it's about um you know taking care of my body while doing it and make sure I'm doing all the other stuff to to support that as well so um I train hard for my sport but um because actually I've got a competition coming up in October um 
which I thought <laughs> at the time I thought was only a local competition. But um, it turns out it's the, the national championships. So <laughs> <laughs> um, because I didn't realize here that normally you have to qualify um, to take part in the in the nationals. But here, because it's not a massive sport, um, there's not enough numbers to have those district meets. So so they just go straight for the for the big competition. So so yeah, I'm competing in the nationals, but you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a good experience. Um, so yeah. So where was I going? Yeah. So, um, so I'm also doing all the other stuff to support that. So I'm training hard, but I'm also like getting really good sleep, like really good quality sleep. Actually, that's one thing that, that really improved since we, since we worked together. I can sleep, I can sleep for nine or 10 hours a night now, like solidly, which is amazing because I used to sleep like six, six or seven. Um, yeah, so I, I look after my body now. I do all the recovery stuff and and I make sure that, like, the thing is with powerlifting, if you're not fueling yourself, you're just not, you're just not going anywhere. Like, you're never going to build the muscle. You're never going to build the strength to do it. And so food is like a tool now it's just uh it's it's part of it. I guess it's part of like my powerlifting toolbox in a way it's like it's just another thing that makes up makes up my training and um yeah so I um, immensely different approach to exercise than it used to be before um and also in the way that I've accepted I guess what I refer to as my new body because when I got my period back, um, it was like I, it was like I grew hips. <laughs> it's like my hips got bigger, um, and I looked into it a bit, and apparently it, it seems to be a common experience. Um, but for me, that was a bit of an adjustment initially because it wasn't what I was used to seeing. But now with the powerlifting, like I just love looking strong. I love, I love looking like I love the way that I don't know it's like it's seeing what your body can do you know it's like a it's a really fulfilling thing in that sense and it's not it's not about being it's not about being hyper muscular either or being like really cut or anything like that but it's like wow this is a this is a powerful machine you know um I, yeah it's like night and day completely like night and day and i remember and maybe you can correct me if my memory's wrong on this but your transition before you got back into doing lifting was having exercise be play and just going through a, a real phase of just as you said like doing handstands or just moving your body in a way like a kid that that felt fun again because for so long it it really hadn't been like that yeah, absolutely. Um, because we went through a point at which I, I really cut back. And um, when I did start to exercise again, like you say, it was about, it was about re, I guess, reestablishing what movement meant to me. Um, because for so long, it was very much like a mechanical thing about like on this day I do this, on this day I do this, and I don't miss a day, and I train. I was training like every day or whatever, and then it became about, okay, what do I want to do? And so it would be like, I'm I'm gonna go for a skate. Like I I like to I like to do inline skating, so I would go for a skate, or it would be. I'm going to swim in the lake because my friends are going to the lake. I'm going to the lake. We're going to swim. And it's part of, it's part of that and not just about, not just for the purpose of, of burning energy, you know? And I think that's when I started to, started to relearn like that it's more about what your body can do. And then I started to get much more, like I say, much more fulfillment out of that movement because it was it was skills, you know, it was things that I and then I 
like at the moment like I I can do like a six or seven second hold on handstands and that to me that's like much more of an achievement than oh today I burned x amount of of calories and it it, it's a much yeah through those kinds of things I've also built other communities as well and I think before exercise was very much a solitary thing for me whereas now it's it's a, a means of engagement with people with similar interests and yeah it's 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 about fun it's about being alive it's about like I say with all this energy that I've got it's it's really about my community and my interests and yeah just really I don't know before it was like this was it was something that took up my time but it was it felt relentless like really relentless but now it's like it's something that takes up my time but I feel like I'm committed and it's it's a total it's a different a totally different way of looking at it and it's it's like I'm committed and I I like to go to practice because I have a good time and I feel supported by those people and I get lots of encouragement in that and yeah it's just a totally different perspective and so I know you probably covered some of it throughout your chat but like how was your overall life shifted what are, what are some of the things that you were doing now that weren't achievable before or you just weren't able to do before yeah um I think some of the things maybe I haven't touched on is like I used to I used to be really scared to like literally scared to to eat around other people um because I think I knew like I knew rationally that the way I ate wasn't not not normal but it wasn't like sufficient and so I really used to avoid um I used to avoid lunch times with people like I say dinners with people um but when when I started my PhD uh the community of the community of my department and the the way that people did things was that they all eat lunch together and so it became really difficult to avoid that um and that used to be a massive source of anxiety and I I I used to try and like used to try and like bulk out what I was eating just by like with like lettuce and stuff just to make it look as if it was a bigger meal and 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 the thing was the more I did that the more people commented on on what I was eating and and I used to hate it when co- people commented on like it really like made me super anxious Whereas now, like, it's it's not a problem, and and the thing is, right? So the thing is, I'm still a bit of a strange eater, if that's the way to put it. But like, I just put, I have weird combinations of food that I like, and so I'll maybe sometimes have weird combinations, and people will still pass comments, and I'll just be like, "This is my food. This is your food. Like, I don't care." Like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that that's something that maybe I hadn't mentioned, but um. Yeah, I just, like, even when it comes to some of my PhD as well, like, I I can, I never used to be able to make it through the day without just feeling utterly exhausted. And now, like, I turn up, like, people have to come tell me to stop for breaks because I, I'm just, like, 100 miles an hour, like, and as a result, like I'm, I'm really ahead of time with my my PhD now. Um, probably looks like I might finish early, so I can really, <laughs> I can just kind of take it easy for the moment. Um, and yeah, just I can, you know, the the day ends at five five thirty or whatever it is, and I'm like, oh okay, that like is that the time? Like oh, better go home, you know. And I I've got the energy to think, I've got the energy to write, and and really be be present like really be present in my life like I I think before I was just kind of like yeah I was like half of me I would say um and it 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 was something my mum commented on when I went to visit back home and she was just like it's just like it's like the old you the old you is just like is back and I think 
that was one of the biggest things is like I can I can really give something to what I do what like what I do like in my studies and like I can I can like we we had a we organized a conference here for example and um I was responsible for uh, recruiting all the volunteers and arranging their work schedule and everything like that. And previously, like, I would just, I would either have not been able to cope with just because just the energy factor, I would have gotten really anxious about it because, you know, there's there's lunches involved in that, and there's coffee breaks involved in that and whatever else, and it's not routine and it's not, I, I can't control that situation, whereas I... I did it and, you know, I was really buzzing. It was a good experience. It was great for networking and I was really, like, involved in the process and everything like that. And and likewise with my with my lifting now, like, I, I can really... I, of course, everybody has days where they do don't want to work out and everything, but before, like, it used to be such a struggle sometimes to get through my workout, whereas now... Like I can really, I can really push myself because I've got, I've got the energy and, and I've also not just the physical energy, but mentally because I'm so, I'm so much more content because obviously I'm eating better that just mentally I can cope with those situations better as well. And I, I just, I feel complete, I've, it's such a cliche but I feel like a different person I feel like I don't feel like I don't really know that person that was that was in that place anymore and it feels like I've really left that behind like the first time I when I initially because I kind of went in I went into recovery and then I relapsed once and then I came out and went into recovery again and and at that point I I was still holding on to my eating disorder in a way but I genuinely feel like I've left it behind now and it and I can speak openly about it like it's not like it comes up in conversation every day but it it might happen the you know some talking about something in the past or whatever and I can say to people I had anorexia I was sick or something like that and it's not it's it's not it doesn't define me anymore it's not it's not a part of me it's a part of my past I learned from it for sure I think it's made me a better person in the sense that I appreciate a lot I like really appreciate my health a lot and I appreciate the people I have in my life a lot but like really it's it's just not part of my my being anymore at all um and I feel like I've really moved on which is a massive thing because it took up a pretty big proportion of of my of my life so yeah that's I think that's really the most poignant thing for me um is that this time I feel like it's really I'm done you know and I'm not going to relapse I'm not I'm just not going back there um and you say, and you said you, you, you feel like a different person and, and I can uh, agree with you on that. I mean, chatting with you now versus chatting with you when we, <laughs> when we first started, it is a different person. I mean, you, yeah. you are just brighter. Um, I mean, there was definitely like a, a somberness to you before. Yeah. Um, you said you, you laugh easier and I, I totally agree with that. But just, yeah, yeah the, the difference in your perspective about, so many aspects of life is is completely different to to when we first started yeah absolutely absolutely so part of the reason we're recording this is because i'm taking on new clients um what would you say to someone who is struggling with with what you were dealing with like what advice would you have for them and i'm not asking for you to to give gushing braids it could be go work with some other practitioner or go do something else but just if someone's unsure about what is the next step or what they should do what advice would you give them yeah sure um so if I was talking to myself I guess in that in that time 
I would just say that it's okay to be scared about it. It's okay to to not know the answers, to not know like if it's going to work or not. But that really, if someone was unsure about asking asking for it, asking for help, I I would just say just try. Just try because at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I think you have more to lose if you don't give it a shot than if you give it a shot. Um, And I know what it feels like to feel stuck. And I guess it's a very uh, cliched thing as well, but you know it if if nothing changes nothing changes um and accept the fact that you probably won't like a good part of what you have to do <laughs> but um honestly if if it gets you even like 10% close to where i feel right now like then that's that's so worth it and it it's so worth just it's it's worth it for you it's worth for you to give yourself the investment because at the end of the day you know life is very fragile and yeah just just be okay to be scared and be unsure but just give it a chance i think so Thank you so much for for coming on and and for sharing all of this. I know we're talking about fairly personal stuff, um, sure. but I think it's been wonderful you've been able to speak so freely and honestly. And as I said, to see the the difference between now and and where you were when we first started is is huge. So yeah, uh, thank you. No, thanks a lot. It's been it's been really good to catch up as well. Really good. <laughs> awesome. So I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Rachel. I hope it demonstrated the many areas I work on with clients and also what's possible to achieve if you want to make a change. As I mentioned at the top of the show, I'm now taking on clients again. If you're interested in working together or finding out more, uh, head over to www.7-health.com forward slash help. And then you can read about how I work with clients and apply for a free initial chat. So that's it for this week's show. I'll be back next week, uh, most probably with another solo episode. And I will catch you then. Thanks for